In this video, we explore the life and actions of Ferdinand Schorner, a prominent leader but polarizing figure in World War II, dive into the complexities of his wartime decisions and their lasting impact on history. Ferdinand Schorner was born on June 12, 1892, in Munich, Germany. He initially joined the Bavarian army during World War I and quickly rose through the ranks, receiving several promotions for his combat skills and leadership abilities. After the war, he continued his military service in the post-World War I Reichswehr, the German army during the Weimar Republic. During World War II, Schorner was highly successful during the German campaigns in Poland, commanding the 98th Mountain Regiment. During the Balkans campaign, he commanded the German 6th Mountain Division and earned the Knight's Cross for his role in breaching the famous Metaxas Line. He remained with this division for the remainder of the year and took part in Operation Barbarossa. When the German invasion of the Soviet Union began, the 6th D. Berg's Division was assigned to the Arctic sectors in the Eastern Front. In 1942, as a General der Gebirg Struppe, he took command of the X-6 Mountain Corps, part of the German Army in Finland. With this command, he participated in the failed attack on Murmansk and the stalemate war that resulted from it. His famous statement, Arctis is nichts, the Arctic is nothing, originated here, meaning that Arctic climatic conditions were not bad enough to negatively affect the German soldiers. Schorner's primary job was to keep the Pachenka Nickel Works in German hands. When the Soviets opened an offensive against the Arctic sector, the 6th Gebirgs, division took part in the defensive. It is said that during these battles, Schorner took part in hand-to-hand -hand combat with his men. In January 1942, Schorner was promoted to the rank of General Lieutenant, commanding the Mounted Corps Norway. While commanding the Mounted Corps Norway, Schorner held off Soviet offensives. He later commanded the German XXX Panzer Corps on the Eastern Front from November 1943 to January 1944. In March 1944, he was made commander of Army Group A, and in May commander of Army Group A, and in May commander of Army Group South Ukraine. After initially stating that the Crimean port of Sevastopol could be held for a long time, even if Crimea fell, he changed his mind and, against Hitler's wishes, evacuated the Black Sea portings. Error, this retreat occurred too late, and the German Rhenian 17th Army, which was holding Crimea, suffered severe losses, with many men killed or captured while waiting on the piers to be evacuated. During the late spring of 1944, Schoner managed in a series of defensive battles to stabilize the crumbling front in the south on the Dniester River in Romania. Schoner was promoted to the rank of Generalobrist in April 1944. In July, he became commander of Army Group North, which was later renamed Army Group Courland, where he stayed until January 1945, when he was made commander of Army Group Center, defending Czechoslovakia and the upper reaches of the River Odo. He became a favorite of high-level Nazi leaders, such as Joseph Goebbels, whose diary entries from March and April 1945 have many words of praise for Schorner and his methods. Finally, on 4 April 1945, Schorner was promoted to field marshal and was named as the new commander-in-chief of the German Army-in-Chief of the German Army, Oberbefschaber des Heeres. In Hitler's last testament, Ivern nominally served in this post until the surrender of the Third Reich on 8 May 1945, but in reality, continued to command his army group since no staff was available to him. He did not have any discernible influence in the final days of the Reich. Promotion to Field Marshal in late April 1945, Schorner was promoted to the rank of Field Marshal, making him one of the last individuals to attain this high rank in the German military. His promotion was seen by some as a reward for his unwavering loyalty to Adolf Hitler and his willingness to carry out the most extreme measures to defend Nazi Germany. Surrender and post-war fate. With the end of World War E approaching, Schorner continued to resist Allied forces. He held out in Czechoslovakia until early May 1945, when he finally surrendered to the U.S. Army, however, the U.S. authorities handed him over to the Soviets. Schorner spent several years as a prisoner of war in the Soviet Union, where he was subjected to interrogation and imprisonment. He was released in 1955 and returned West Germany. Later, life and legacy. After his release, Schorner lived in relative obscurity in West Germany. He avoided active participation in public life and military discussions. He died on July 2, 1973, in Munich. Ferdinand Schorner's legacy is one of controversy and criticism due to his extreme tactics, including the execution of retreating soldiers and the use of civilian conscripts during the final stages of World War I. His actions and methods continue to be a subject of historical debate and condemnation. Ferdinand Schorner, as a military commander during World War I.E., employed a mix of tactics and strategies during his service on the Eastern Front. His tactics evolved as the war progressed, reflecting the changing fortunes of Nazi Germany and the Eastern Front. Here are some key aspects of Schorner's war tactics. Aggressive defense. 
Shorna was known for his aggressive defensive tactics. He often ordered his troops to hold positions at all costs, resisting Soviet advances with fierce determination. His goal was to buy time and inflict heavy casualties on the enemy. Counterattacks. Shorna was not solely focused on defense. He also launched counterattacks to disrupt Soviet offenses. These counterattacks aimed to regain lost ground and put pressure on the advancing Soviet forces. Use of terrain. Shorna made effective use of the natural terrain to fortify defensive positions. He took advantage of rivers, forests, and other natural barriers to create strong defensive lines. No retreat policy. One of the most controversial aspects of Schwerner's tactics was his no retreat policy. He ordered that soldiers caught retreating without orders be executed. This harsh measure was intended to maintain discipline and prevent mass retreats, but came at a high human cost. Utilization of militia units. As the situation deteriorated for Nazi Germany, Schwerner resorted to mobilizing Volkssturm units, which consisted of civilian conscripts, to bolster his forces. These units were often poorly trained and equipped. Scorched Earth Tactics In the face of advancing Soviet forces, Shorna sometimes employed scorched earth tactics, ordering the destruction of infrastructure and resources to deny them to the enemy. Communication and Logistics Shorna emphasized the importance of effective communication and logistics to support his troops. Maintaining supply lines and coordinating movements were critical aspects of his tactics. Tenacity and loyalty. Schorner's leadership style was marked by unwavering loyalty to Adolf Hitler and a determination to fight to the bitter end. This contributed to his reputation as a controversial and uncompromising commander. It's important to note that, while Schorner was known for his aggressive tactics, especially during the later stages of the war, his approach did not ultimately alter the course of the conflict. Nazi Germany faced insurmountable challenges, and Schorner's tactics were unable to prevent the eventual defeat of the Axis powers on the Eastern Front. His methods have been widely criticized for their harshness and disregard for human life. Mission Velichovki belongs among the less-known military actions of 16th Armored Division in the former Czechoslovakia. The aim of the mission was to deliver the surrender signed on 7 May 1945 in reams to the Field Marshal Ferdinand Schorner, commanders of Army Group Sent. Colonel General Jodo was warning the Allies that, Due to fighting with the Red Army, the units may not obey, or there may not be a sufficient connection. Therefore, Agent Colonel Mayer Detring was brought to Pilsen. He was supposed to deliver the surrender. The mission commander was Lieutenant Colonel Robert H. Pratt of the 5th Corps Staff of the 3rd Army. The convoy was under the command of Major Carl O. Dowd and consisted of five Ford Might, three Jeeps, two staff limousines, radio and ambulance vehicle. The convoy was further accompanied by military journalists and a correspondent of Reuters, Mission pulled out of Pilsen at 9.40 p.m. on 7 May 1945. The route led through Zebrak, Zdisi, Berun, and Modal to Bartola Majeska Street to the headquarters Bartols, where the brief hearings were conducted. After midnight of 8 May 1945, convoy continued through Podbedri, Klumek Nad Sidlino, Radek Kralov, Horus, and Jeremer to a spa place, Velichovki. While negotiating with the German side, the terms of the surrender were forwarded. The negotiations ended at about 11 p.m., there is still a confusion whether Field Marshal Schorner was present personally. Meanwhile, the convoy caused upheaval in Velikovki and the Americans received a warm welcome from the locals. At noon, the mission headed back to Pilsen in the two groups. One went through Harigek Krilov and the other via Horus and Ostromer. Here an incident with local partisans took place. The two groups met again in Klumek nad Silino and proceeded to Pilsen via Kralopi and Barone. They arrived back in Pilsen at 6 p.m. The Red Army only became aware of the presence of the American soldiers when seeing the photos from Herodic Kralov. In conclusion, Ferdinand Schorner was a complex and controversial figure in the history of World War IE. His military career was marked by both notable achievements and severe criticisms. While he displayed tactical skill and determination on the battlefield, especially during his command on the Eastern Front, his leadership style and methods have been widely condemned. Schorner's aggressive defensive tactics, no retreat policy, and use of Volkssturm units reflected the desperate and ruthless nature of the final stages of the war for Nazi Germany. His unwavering loyalty to Adolf Hitler and his determination to fight to the last had a significant impact on his decisions and the outcome of battles under his command. Ultimately, Schorner's legacy is one of controversy. He is remembered for his role in the defense of Nazi Germany during its downfall and for the harsh measures he employed, which resulted in significant human suffering. His actions during this period continue to be a subject of historical debate and criticism, overshadowing his earlier military achievements in World War I. In the pages of history, we find both answers and questions. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Subscribe for more captivating stories from the past. I'm War Historican, signing off for now.